welcome to Petite Weaver Crafts episode 9. Today I'm recording on July 25th, 2016 in Los Angeles. Thank you so much for all the returning viewers and for new viewers, this is a video podcast about knitting, spinning, weaving, and kind of all the little crafty things that I get myself into. Thank you so much for joining me today. So for today's episode, I have some stash enhancements, some finished objects, works in progress. I will be giving you the final totals from my tour de fleece as well as a giveaway. So please stay tuned to the very end to hear more details about it. So first up is stash enhancements. Um, so last week I received my fiber share um, package. So fiber share is a fiber based swap as you can tell from the name. Um, so you pay a little bit of money to the organizers. They match you up with another fiber community member to send a package to as well as a fiber community member that you will be receiving a package from. And they did this based off of the questionnaire that you filled out. Um, and that allows you to kind of connect with two different people for each of the swaps. And I believe they do this every quarter. Um, so this was the second quarter of the year. Um, and if you guys are interested, I will also share next time the um, sign-ups go around. So, um, my package came from the lovely Zebra Wolf on Instagram. And oh my goodness, she, she was such a sweetheart and sent me so many wonderful things. Um, so one of the things that I placed on my little questionnaire survey was that I would like to try out some CVM um, wool fleece. Um, and CVM is a California variegated mutant, which is a breed of sheep that is that was developed in um, California. So I wanted to try it out. And she was so lovely. Um, she sent me a little sample of the raw fleece itself, as well as some row logs that she did and some row logs that she blended. And this was blended with some tufts of silk. So each of these were about one ounce um, and you can't really tell on camera but these are the squishiest fluffiest um, Rologs I've ever seen. And the fiber is super super bouncy. Um, I'm really excited to try to spin these up and see how I like the sheep breed. In addition to that, she sent me a lovely skein of singles that she spun herself. And these lovely um, fall autumn colors. Um, there's lots of oranges, browns, um, very, very pretty. And the yardage is about 230 yards. So maybe a hat out of this, um, yeah. And up next is a lovely bat. She marked this as wool, um, some stellina, and a little bit of bamboo. And it even came with these lovely dyed lots, um, so I can make a nice textured yarn out of it. Um, I think this might be Winsleydale or Lincoln lots. They kind of have this um, super curly ends on them. But yeah, don't they go so well together? Um, she was, I can't believe she was so generous with her package, oh my goodness. And then last but not least, uh, one of the things that I mentioned that I had wanted to do a little bit more of was um, some tapestry weaving. So she sent me this lovely um, tapestry bobbin. So you would wrap your working yarn along this little space here and then you use the tip to kind of weave in and out um, with your warp. And yeah, isn't that gorgeous? And this lovely bobbin was handmade by Triff's Turnings. I can't wait to try my hand a little bit more at tapestry weaving. And of course, us knitters, we love tea, right? Um, so she sent me some lovely Tazo green ginger tea and some uh, mint tea as well. And some dark chocolate lavender caramels. Oh my goodness, I'm excited to dig into these. I'm such a fan of dark chocolate. Um, I didn't used to be. I, I think it's something that's acquired as you get older because I loved milk chocolate for such a long time and then now I can't eat this stuff. I think it's too sweet. Um, I much prefer dark chocolate. 
And kind of one of the funny things that she got me, which, but I'm like seriously excited for, is some curried ketchup. Um, I have, I haven't tried this brand before, but there's a restaurant um, that I go to occasionally called Worcesterkirsch. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's, um, they have a um, in-store made curry ketchup that I always put on everything. So I'm really excited to try out this one as well. So yeah, that was my fiber share package. Thank you so much Zebrawolf for the lovely, lovely package. I cannot wait to try out the CBM. So up next is finished objects. As I mentioned on the last episode, I had a lot of traveling last week. Um, so on Monday, I flew into San Francisco and then had a meeting and then flew back out. Um, and I managed to finish off my shorty socks. So once I inserted the fish lips kiss heel, I knit a few rows and then did a two by two rib cuff. Um, and yeah, these are, I think I was probably about this far done last time I showed you guys. Um, and then I knit on the plane there. We were traveling around on the BART, um, which is their metro system, I think, in San Francisco. Anyway, I got a lot of knitting done. So this was just a plain vanilla sock with a square toe. Um, 56 stitches on size double zero Addy uh, sock rockets in, and a fish lips kiss heel like I mentioned. So from Wednesday through Sunday of last week I went to the San Diego Comic Con and as part of the convention um, there's actually a lot of line waiting and kind of sitting around so I had a lot of time to, um, to knit. And here is my star shower cowl. So this was knit up with the lovely mini skein set by uh, the super talented Danny of One Twisted Tree. She's also one half of the Prairie Girls Knit and Spin podcast. And this project was part of my podcaster along knit along hosted by Michelle of the Actually Knitting podcast. So this cal is a cal shawl hybrid. Um, so this top portion right here was knit like a crescent shaped shawl and then I joined in the round and knit it like a cowl um, so you can have it up around your neck like this or you can pull it down around your shoulders if you get a little bit colder and wear it a little bit more like a shawl and I love the way this gradient turned out I haven't blocked it so it's curling a little bit at the ends here but the colors are so gorgeous uh, I absolutely adore the way this turned out. Um, I probably won't be wearing it for a little while because it is pretty warm here in LA but I cannot wait until the weather cools down a little bit more for me to wear this cowl. So I did modify this pattern a little bit. Um, I added these last two panels um, without increases to the end of the pattern before I did the garter edging here um, because I wanted to use every last bit of the gradient set. Um, and I still have a little bit left over of the black, so I'll probably just add that to my scrap blanket. But yeah, oh, oh my goodness, I love, 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 love the way this, um, this cowl turned out. Yeah. So that's it for my finished objects. Up next is my works in progress. So after I bound off my last pair of shorty socks, I cast it on another pair. Um, so here they are. Um, I'm probably a little more than a third of the way through the foot. I think I can probably squeeze out three pairs of shorty socks out of the skein, which is good. Um, I tend to lose one of a pair fairly often, which is kind of embarrassing because they are hand-knit socks, but I do wear them. Um, and sometimes I don't always remember to put them back into my hand wash only basket. So with six socks, hopefully I'll at least have enough to continue to wear them for a while. It's been fun seeing the slight variations of how the colors pop up in each of these socks. So yeah, so here they all are. And then the other project that I've been working on during my travels is my Meridian cardigan. And this pattern is by Hohi Locatelli. And I added about another two or so inches not a ton. Um, as I mentioned previously, this sweater is constructed by knitting across the body 
and then picking up from this top side here for the back and shoulder portions um, and then you would add the sleeves and this yarn is Forbidden Woolery's Archangel Wings and the base is pr their Pride Lace and it's this lovely sand color um, with a little bit of tonals um, with a little bit of pink in there and um, yeah and you can see here there's a little pop of orange as well yeah it's a wonderful yarn to work with oh and it also has Stellina in the base but yeah this project's been really fun to knit it has a good size panel of stockinette and stockinette's like my jam um, but it keeps my brain engaged since there is some more interesting portions like the cables and the texture detailing on it um, and I will be flying to Boston on Tuesday so I'll get to work on this project a little bit more and it's living in my new local project bag and um, I get to enter this into the the podcaster along knit along as well because Nicole from Hugh Loco is another lovely video podcaster and she has amazing tutorials on how to dye yarn as well as sew project bags and I'll link her channel down below so you can check out her videos if you would like as well so that's it for my works in progress this week um, up next is my tour de fleece spinning I had these grandiose plans about Tour de Fleece and all the projects that I was going to get done this year and they just didn't happen. Um, life got in the way and I just didn't have the sit down time to spin. Um, but I did manage to finish these two skeins. Um, it's about 400 yards of chain ply BFL base um, and this lovely colorway is dyed by Lores of Be Mice Elf in her bikini ombre gradient. So the way to calculate how much spinning you did is, um, so this these two skeins ended up being about 400 yards and it, there, it's a chain ply, three ply yarn. So that's 1200 yards um, of singles. And then since I plied them, that adds another 400 yards to my 1200. So that's 1600 yards that I completed during Tour de Fleece. Yeah, um, yeah, so I didn't get as much done as I wanted to, but whatever. Um, I can't be too hard on myself about life getting in the way. Um, but I adore the project that I did finish, and maybe I will make something out of these um, for Ravelinux, um, which is kind of a craft along hosted on Ravelry um, during the Olympics. Um, so yeah, until next year, Tour de Fleece. Alrighty, I'm sure you guys are getting a little bit impatient and want to know about the giveaway. Um, so this is my first ever giveaway um, and I wanted to celebrate the fact that I surpassed 100 subscribers on this channel. Um, it kind of blows my mind that I would have gotten to 100 subscribers at all. So yeah, I wanted to celebrate that wonderful and very unexpected um, milestone by giving away some mini skeins. Um, so these mini skeins might look a little familiar. Um, I picked out some of the ones that I kind of highlighted in my cozy memories blanket. Like this little skein by um, Material Culture Fiber Arts in her Super Bloom colorway. As well as the one that I mentioned last week. Which this is Yarn Inks Cold as Ice. And a skein of Deep Hue Seas um, in her Glitzy Glam colorway I believe this is. So each of these mini skeins are at least 25 yards, so you should be able to finish a mitered square for your Cozy Memories blanket. Yeah, so if you guys are interested in winning this lovely set of mini skeins from my personal stash, um, please comment down below of what's your favorite thing that you've seen on my channel so far. And um, also let me know if you want to hear about anything else a little bit more. In order to win, you must be a subscriber to the channel. And this giveaway is only open to US residents. I'm so sorry international viewers, um, international shipping is just a little bit outside of my comfort zone for the time being. And I will keep this giveaway open for two weeks um, and I will announce the winner on episode 11. Special shout out to Twee from the Twisted Stitches podcast. Thank you so much for mentioning me in your last episode and it was great seeing you even if it was very brief at Comic Con. Alrighty, that's it for me this week. Um, thank you again so much for joining me.